welcome, welcome. So today is um, International Women's Day. We were recording this for International Women's Day. Um, we decided to come together. Uh, my name is Jennifer Schaller, and I'm joined with these two lovely ladies, um, Tiffany Casano and Emma Traharn. And we have been on a journey together over the last seven weeks inside a cohort I designed called Your Voice, Your Income. And towards the end of the cohort, we realized Women's Day was coming up and we decided that, you know, everything that we had been working on together through this cohort about discovering your voice and feeling empowered by your voice and using that to feel really confident and excited about your business and serving others. Um, we decided the theme for Women's Day was great, inclusivity, but more specifically about how inclusivity includes you. So today we're joined together to talk about this, what it means to include yourself, how that looks and feels for you, um, and all the themes that come up with that that we find are really important and um, we're excited to share some of our ideas and thoughts around it. So a little bit about me. Um, I mentioned I have the cohort, Your Voice, Your Income. So I'm a marketing consultant and mentor for other service providers like consultants and coaches. And I work closely with them to help them understand more about the foundations of their marketing so that they can really communicate clearly and passionately about what it is that they do to help and serve others. Um, we work a lot on LinkedIn. So I've been really excited and proud of all the great progress and work these two ladies have done together as a team. And yeah, I think a lot of the themes that come up today are going to be really, um, they'll resonate with a lot of you, especially if you have your own business or you've thought about starting your own business, but or just as a professional, like as, as someone in the world, like feeling included, what does that really mean to you? And um, how can we sit more in that and bring it more into your everyday life? So I'd like to hand it off to, how about Tiffany first? You can introduce yourself. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for that beautiful introduction, Jennifer. It's been just a joy to get to know the both of you. And I'm so grateful for what we've built out of this cohort. Of course, it served our businesses, but more than that, we've built a friendship and I'm super joyous about that. And this conversation to talk about how inclusivity includes us, those of us identifying as women and so introduction to me, I am Tiffany Castaño and I'm CEO and founder of Sefer LLC. That is an acronym for cultivating the evolution of professional HR because I am on a fierce mission to have inclusivity mean HR too and having a seat at the table, but also in order to help shape the cultures of small to medium businesses who I partner with across the U.S., and really helping them shape and build the foundations of their culture, which is a ton of fun. And we talk a lot about inclusivity. So I'm looking forward to sharing more today. Brilliant. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tiffany. And Emma, I'd love to hear from you. I'm just going to echo what Tiffany has said as well, because whilst this has served our businesses, what this has done is brought us all together and made us all feel included. And the reason that that is so important to me, so I'm Emma Trahan and I'm the founder of Nouvelle Life, I should say that first of all, is that my focus really is on nervous system support, on um, health for women, women's health. So specifically in the years of perimenopause and menopause and all the experiences that women in business, entrepreneurs or in the corporate world go through and how we can help ourselves so my 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 mission really is to help women empower themselves to feel better every single day so that they can make choices that feel great for them and this is why we kind of came up with this conversation wasn't it around the inclusivity includes you and it's really important to take care of yourself yes totally agree um I think it was really interesting how we we were really excited about coming together to talk about this um, for Women's Day. And then 
when with the theme of inclusivity, we're like, huh, how can we talk about this? Like what resonates most with us? And then Tiffany, you brought up that idea of inclusivity includes you. And I'm like, yes, I think that's a really commonly overlooked concept of yourself, right? We work so hard to serve others and think about others. And it's a lot of outward energy. And a lot of times you forget or don't have time. You just feel like there's so many other things to do. How can I spend the time thinking about what I need? Um, and that's something that both of you, I think, do so beautifully from different angles. Um, so yeah, I some of the concepts that came up um, during our time together, just want to mention now the rest rebel, Emma, that was one of your brain childs. Would you mind just telling us a little bit more about that and what that means to you? Hashtag rest rebel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we all probably know, you know, how exhausting life can be. And there is an epidemic of lack of rest. In fact, it's often seen as, you know, a badge of honor to say how busy we are and how hard we work. And, and of course it's, you know, it's important to, to have that in your life. When you have something you're passionate about, you pay attention to it and you pay and you give it effort and energy. But we also know that most people have nervous systems that are dysregulated a lot of the time from external pressure or internal pressure. Everyone is incredibly busy. And when we're not getting enough sleep, enough rest, we can't think properly. We can't come up with plans. We can't be creative. We can't make great decisions. We feel frustrated, overwhelmed, and things just don't feel easy. And so one of my big things is really helping people to find ways to rest more deeply so that they can be more present in their lives. And I've often been told I'm a bit rebellious. And I just thought, well, rest rebel, you know, because it may be seen still as a bit rebellious, but you know, we eat when we're hungry, we drink when we're thirsty, and yet we don't stop and take a break. We don't stop and rest. And so it's one of my missions to really talk a lot about and educate and inspire people to understand how rest is really vital. So yeah, rest rebel was the hashtag that was sort of born. Yes, I love it. Um, and I think another big theme that came up for all of us was the your voice. I mean, that was a central theme to the cohort of finding your voice, what it sounds and feels like and showing up like it. I think it's really difficult in this day and age with social media to really identify what your voice is because you have this underlying pressure to act and talk a certain way to fit in. But then that brings you further away from your voice. So it's counterintuitive um, and it can make it really hard for you to stand out for who you really are. And that is exactly how you become recognized by the people that want your help and you'd be good to work with like a good match is when you actually step into you know your own values your personal mission all of those things that are deeply related to your voice and I just wanted to share a little story um when I as you both know I just did a big drive last weekend <laughs> from Florida to Michigan so I I had an audiobook playing. Um, I don't know if either of you have read the book by Michelle Obama, Becoming. She has a few books. Mm -hmm. but one of her first ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tiffany, do you know? back here. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I had read it before, I think when it, she first released it, but I was listening to it again. And she was talking about when she was first on the campaign trail, when her husband, Barack Obama, was first running for president. She was out on the trail a lot on her own, doing her own speeches. Um, and she was having a hard time with it. She was getting some negative uh, press about her being like too angry or like just not not a an asset to her husband was what they were saying. And she was finding like she's like, what is it that I'm doing wrong? She was asking for feedback. And then she got the guidance that 
you know, play to your strengths, the things that are really important to you versus what you're trying to talk about, like what your husband's values and missions are. Like she supports them, but it's not really about what lights her up. And like one of the things that she was really interested in is um, child's, uh, like the the diet for children, like school diet, healthier diets, you know, like growing gardens and vegetables and fruits, like all more access for that for children. And she started to infuse more of that. And I kid you not, she said, I found my voice. And when I found my voice, everything changed. Everything started to fit and flow and her performance got better. People were starting to resonate more with her message because she stopped trying to act and talk how she thought that they wanted her to. She actually figured out what her voice was and stepped more into that. So when she said those words, I found my voice. I was like, yes, exactly. This is what we've been talking about for the past seven weeks together. How it's just that missing piece that can be so hard um, and scary and challenging to do on your own without that support, right? So yeah, I think that's really when, truly when you feel included is when you know what your voice is and you know how to use it. Yeah, because you're including yourself yes. in the conversation. I think a lot of women that I speak to feel separated from themselves. Then they don't know what they really want, what they need, exhausted and overwhelmed. And so to find your voice, requires that attention and in community when you get reflected back you know we did a lot of reflecting back to each other I really loved what you said I could really hear what you said then I can hear the passion in your voice for example those are the sorts of things we wanted to hear that helps us feel included it helps us find our voice and then when we get you know from my point of view enough rest and the nervous system regulation and to understand our physiological and mental responses to situations our voice is more able to come through what do you think tiffany yeah i agree and i just have to give over the credit to emma because she is the one who said inclusivity includes you because of her work and really how she helps women and I just now like thinking of having my own voice, I'm a pretty confident person and I'm too a rebel <laughs> to get on my soapbox and rah, rah for the right thing always. And, but it hearing like saying my voice now feels different since being in the cohort because we got to explore these passions together. We created safe space for each other. And I think that, you know, for me, like making this pivot into like from core HR, not transactional, but to transformational, but then also about culture. And that's because at the heart of that is people, is inclusion. And I want people to celebrate themselves and their top potential. And I want leaders to feel that too. And so when we were able to do that and we were able to show up in our full selves for and with each other, that was just so powerful. It truly was the power of community. When you talk about community and elevating your voice and it's all those things, that's what's required when you come together in community. We need each other and that's what inclusion is at the end of the day. Yes, absolutely. The community aspect of it, I think just brings it to a whole new level because it can be really hard on your own to really dive into that and understand and reflect. Like you can do a lot of reflection on your own, yeah, but to bring it to the next level, you need that safe space where you can share and receive feedback and feel understood and seen and kind of have that co-creation, right? And that mm -hmm. energy that we bring together. Um, so yeah, it was just such a wonderful experience to have you both be there fully, like with full participation and bringing that energy and vulnerability and just all the things like you, you both brought the magic and truly appreciative of that because it made it that much more enriching for yourselves. So yeah. Yeah. you actually, you actually said a really magic word there, Jen, you said understood. Mm. Mm. And that's what being included means as well is being understood and taking the time to understand someone else, 
to ask those questions, to be curious about what someone else needs, you know, and I think when we feel understood, you know, it's completely the opposite, stating the obvious here, but of being misunderstood. Because when we feel misunderstood by ourselves and others, we're not included. And we might actually take ourselves out of that space. So yeah. I think that's the real magic word is that inclusion is being understood. That is the, that is the key thing that every human wants is to be understood. And deserves, yeah. yeah. Deserves completely. I remember, Emma, because I worked with you in your program as well. Um, that was one of the questions that you had asked at one point, like what does a friendship look like to you? Or how does a friendship feel to you? Something like that. And I remember that was the first thing that came to mind. It was like, I can be myself and feel understood. That's the deep, meaningful relationship for me. And I think that is important to have that kind of relationship across all levels of your life, to have those personal relationships where you feel understood and professional as well, to really have that safety, which is another big theme that Tiffany, you talk about that feeling that safety in your work environment that you do so well, that you help businesses and employers understand how to foster that with their work culture. Um, so that's why I'm really excited about bringing us together to talk about these things because we each deal or, or support people in such a unique way, all related to that theme of inclusivity and safety and feeling empowered. It, it's all kind of related in such a nice bundled way. <laughs> Yeah, I think when we talk about space too, the other thing that came up for me when you when you started talking about that too, Jen, is grace. And actually on a call earlier, we were talking about space and grace, which is something I chat about a lot. But this, when we think about how it's inclusive for us, like inclusivity includes you, it's giving yourself that space and the grace that we don't have to have it all together. It doesn't have to be perfect. We don't have to have it all figured out because decision fatigue is a real thing. And we are expected to make all these decisions and there's, you know, all the societal norms and expectations and all of the demands of business and the things we're doing out there in community to make the world a better place. And so that space and grace is really, you know, when we look to be understood, how we can really bring that back around and give to ourselves as well. So I just wanted to share that that's what came up and it was a very heartwarming feeling to, to just think of. No, oh, I love that. So I have a question. I, if, if we're okay to get started on our fireside chat, we have a few questions that we can take turns asking each other. Um, I'll go ahead and get started with one of the questions, I guess for Tiffany. Um, what barriers to inclusivity have you encountered and how have they, how did they impact you? I think, you know, when we think about the workplace and how it's not always built for everyone, I think, you know, certainly it has been where when we were talking about re our rebellious spirits, how even in that way, from an inclusivity perspective, it wasn't always met with, it was more met with resistance than curiosity and exploration of why may she be feeling this way? Can we explore these ideas? And, you know, I think that has always resonated with me and the way that I do my work and the way that I lead and the way that I mentor others and like to receive feedback and give that feedback to others in, in an advisory and consult consultant. Uh, capacity in the business. And so that's really important to me because what that did is like, it shut down my voice and it effectively shut me down as an employee. And I felt like no one cares about what I have to say. They don't want to listen to it. I'm put in this little box over here. And at one point literally was told, well, we want your opinion. We're going to ask for it. And I was like, oh, that's intense. I can't believe you actually said that. And so when you don't feel like you have a voice at work and you feel like you're being shut down, it really erodes your self-confidence. And you literally, I felt like, well, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get written up or talked to you or lose my job. And so it creates this like underlying trauma for you. And so the next time you go into a situation, you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop or waiting instead of waiting to feel included and welcome, 
and feel like you belong, you're waiting to feel like, all right, what's going to go wrong? What, you know, you're entering that situation with trepidation versus excitement. And so that's some of the things that I face. And that's why I do the work that I do, because I don't want other people feeling that. Yeah, can really resonate with that. But go ahead, Emma. I'm just yeah, just nodding and, and yeah. resonating with uh, with often the sense of hypervigilance that we might have in the workplace for what words can I, you know, how can I say, I want to sort of say this, but I've been told not to be like that. I've been told to be more like mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. So I better not say that. So you sort of start to hide your true self. And of course, you know, there's appropriateness and space for professionalism. And we're talking about, you know, being in a professional space, but there's also space to include your true voice and your your personality so that you're not shut down so that you you know when you're talking Tiffany about culture and leadership and people when we actually um engage people to be the best of who they are and bring their full selves there and everything is welcome and it's included then people can be in the spaces where they are best placed mm-hmm. but when we feel like we can't use our voice And we better not say this. We better not say that. We need to show up in a certain way. There's this sense of fear and concern and worry. And like you touched upon it, it really does impact on people's self-confidence. People worry about, you know, fitting in, not doing a good job. So that obviously then blocks their voice, their creativity, impacts the nervous system, impacts sleep and rest. And then it's a perpetuating cycle So I don't know what you think about that, Jen. Absolutely. Um, Just as you both were talking, um, it reminded me of my past working experience as a teacher. In the past life, I was a grade school, um, second grade teacher. And I loved teaching. I loved being with the kids, but I found that I needed more support. Um, There was behavioral issues, and I just... I was reaching out a lot to management for for more support. And I felt like I wasn't being heard, understood, or they just didn't have the time. I think they cared, but they were overwhelmed themselves. So I felt like my voice was lost amongst all the noise and things just got worse. My stress, anxiety got worse. I was essentially burned out just trying to do it all on my own. Um, and it just, I didn't have the capacity for it. I needed that support. And yeah, it it was a very lonely experience trying to do it all because I felt like that I was expected to do it all and that I wasn't doing it well enough. But then there was that gap of like, hey, I need help and no one's bringing me the help. So yeah, it it was very, very difficult. But now that I'm in a new space where I can, you know, create my own work environment I can really tune into my needs and get my needs met because I have more of that freedom as a business owner Um, it's just made a world of a difference because I feel like I can really speak my voice and be understood and um, it's just so much more empowering I have more energy more creativity Um, it's just you really feel like a new person when you have those needs met it's it's really, it's transformative for me. So yeah, it's, it's a huge deal. And I think when you're trapped in that, you don't necessarily realize it. You kind of turn into yourself, like, what am I not doing? Why am I not enough? That's the danger of it. Mm -hmm. Um, When essentially it's just, you, you need that support. You need to have that time to share those concerns and share like your opinions and thoughts. And it's, unfortunately not always the case that that's available to people um but it's it's just it's fundamental to having that safe working environment where you feel like okay I'm needed I'm valued I have everything I need um so yeah it really resonates for me um I would love to hear from both of you some self-care tips that you might have for our audience today because we spoke a lot about how your voice um 
it's there, there's that psychological safety element to it and getting your needs met. So what are some tips that you might have to make sure that you are taking care of yourself in order to elevate your voice and feel really seen and understood? Mm, do you want to do you want to start, Tiffany? Or do I? <laughs> you can start. I was going to offer the floor to you. I just kind of paused to see. <laughs> you yeah. No, I'm also I'm also pausing to reflect because I think it's important to take simple steps and start small. Because if you are watching this and in a space of overwhelm and not feeling heard or understood then like you've just shared Jen and I think we can all relate to that with our own stories that it can feel like a mountain to climb and you don't have the map and the weather's terrible and you just want to huddle inside and and there's there's nowhere to go so starting really simple and something simple like a five minute pause practice and I say that because that's something that I often start with people. People think that self-care needs to take hours and cost a lot of money. But self-care can be simple nervous system practices. So when we spend even two or three minutes taking our, if you're on a screen, taking your face away from a screen, gazing outside at a tree, something in nature, we know that that resets the nervous system. Now, you may not notice that straight away if you're someone that's in overwhelm or your nervous system is um, really dysregulated if you're not getting enough rest, if you have a lot of external and internal pressure in your life. So something like reaching out and finding someone safe that you can speak to and share because what I know is that when we share our stories, we find out that we're not alone. Someone else will say, me too. And then you begin to be understood. So finding small spaces in your day that you could maybe simply take a pause and you can um, find at the end of this video, we're going to put where you can find us all. So if you want to ask questions or read more, we're not going to be able to put it all in this video now, but you can go on all of our websites and find more information if that's something you're looking for. And maybe something as simple as if you have the opportunity, starting your day without being overwhelmed. So what do most of us do first thing in the morning? Grab our phone, check emails, go on social media. And most people will probably have heard this before. Um, and so how do you actually implement that? Put your phone away when you go to bed. So it's not the first thing you grab. If you can use something else to tell the time or if you do need an alarm, it's not the best way to wake up with an alarm because you're already stressing your nervous system. But try if you can, even if it's just two or three minutes of breathing, perhaps even remembering your dreams, maybe even thinking about some um, exciting things that you've got coming up in the day, whether it's a, a, a call or somebody you're gonna speak to before you start looking at your phone and looking on social media or the news or checking your emails, because that will immediately start a stress response and make us feel you know, on the back foot. So those three things really, um, but just take it easy, be really compassionate to yourself in that. Um, simple steps is what I used to call them way back when I had the clinic. So a five minute pause practice when you can in the day, and that might be listening to something that's recorded or just taking yourself away from the screen and looking outside at a different environment that resets the nervous system. Try to have a few minutes up to half an hour would be great, but just start with a couple of minutes where you don't look at your phone first thing in the morning. And the most important thing really is reaching out and talking to someone, finding someone that you can speak with, sharing how you feel, somebody that you feel safe with, asking them to hear you, to listen and asking them, do you ever feel the same? And maybe that can be really helpful in, in knowing that you're not alone because like you shared, Jen, we always um, are our own worst critic and we always think it must be something to do with me. And the more that we share our stories, we more, more that we realize that we're all the same. We all put the same 
sorts of pressures on ourselves and that comes from various um, spaces but those would be something to start with and something to consider anyway I love those especially the phone one that's something I'm working on (laughs) we're going for you (laughs) and the alarm I agree Um, have you ever heard of those ones that like it's the light it's like a sunrise light that wakes you up yeah I don't have it but I'm interested to maybe try that I think that's nice. never tried it either but yeah I've heard of that yeah really nice how about you Tiffany what comes to mind I mean honestly those are like my top tips that (laughs) Emma just shared the phone being one of them because what I learned through well probably didn't learn it the first time in burnout but the second time I learned that there was this rush to get into the day and to not include myself in what that looked like to put everyone else first. So I would say, don't be afraid to put yourself first. And that means if you don't open your emails for the first 30 minutes of the day, or you go on your bike or for a run, or you pet your cat, or you use a new hair product or whatever it is that lights you up, looking at nature, as Emma said, those are like some of my favorite things. I love a good dance party, whether it's chair dancing or dancing in my living room or my kitchen. Just, I would say like, let your inner child play because we forget, you know, own your story. It's yours to own and just be kind to the way you talk to yourself. I will challenge you to say one kind thing to yourself each day. Um, And I think, you know, just remembering inclusivity includes you. It's you. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Jen? I love that. I just want to say I love that Tiffany brought up the uh, inner child. I think that's a really, really good point. And that's something that I'm always trying to remember to like, have fun. I think as adults, <laughs> we just are kind of trained to be like, get that list done and be so productive all the time. And just taking some time to play is so good for you to like, find your creativity and relax a bit and yeah it's those are those are all really really good ones um for me um yeah I echo all of what you both said and um, something that also came up was we talked about like how the mornings they don't have to be so rushed and they can be a little bit slower of course we have like meetings and work to get to but I remember reading one thing of um I think it was from a monk that said they don't read the news until after lunch that like the mornings are so sacred for just like having that ease and calm and to like, just be present. Like you don't have to absorb the world's problems first thing in the morning. That's not good. Like, okay, you can read the news, but let's like like, ease into your day first. Um, I think that's something that I had a bad habit with of like always wanting to know what's going on. It's like, it's just too much. It's (laughs) self care for me is like, finding what my needs are with that, like how I wake up in the day and just, um, you know, everyone has different interests and what makes them feel more energized or what rest looks like for you. Like for me, I, I love having that outdoor fresh air time to start my day, um, being in nature. Um, so just, I think in the more recent years, I realized that I think, um, yeah, it's, it takes some time to really kind of reflect on like what your interests are, because as a person, I don't know, personally, I felt like in my twenties, I was just always very like, oh, let's go out and do these things that everyone else are doing. But more recently in my thirties, I'm realizing like, oh, I don't like going out all the time. I like having alone time. I like taking baths. (laughs) That's one of my favorite things to do. And that looks different for everyone. And that's okay. But just understanding what it is that energizes you and restores you. Mm-hmm. That's one of my top um, self-care tips, as well as professionally, like in your business side or whether you work um, for someone, just having that ability to say no to the things that don't feel good or resonate with you. Um, I think when you work for someone, it can feel like you have to just say yes all the time. Um, but there's power in speaking up, using your voice to say what doesn't feel good because it doesn't, it contradicts your values or maybe you're just exhausted and you need rest, like speaking up and saying no. Um, one of the things I made a note to myself was saying no to clients who are energy vampires. 
<laughs> there's some people out there that you just you when you're in their presence you get that feeling in your stomach like oh there's just something about this it doesn't work for me I feel drained I feel like they don't respect my time um where where uh mission or visions are misaligned whatever it is it's okay to say no and by saying no you actually create more space for yourself and to invite people that are better aligned in. Um, so just having that guard up to protect yourself, protect your business, if you own a business, um, and also making time for, if you have a business, making time for your own activities for your business that will help you, your business grow. So I think when I work with clients, a lot of the times it's, they don't have that dedicated time, you know, their calendar is open to serve the clients, but it's really important to have that time where you get to explore your voice, you get to explore new opportunities and have that dedicated time blocked off in your calendar, where it's like, all right, right, what are things, it's like a reflection time, what are things that I'm doing right now that I love doing? What are things that are not really speaking to me um, that I want to do less of, like redirect know where what do I want to do more of and what do I want to do less of and it can be so hard to realize that if you don't have that dedicated reflection time because as we know things just get busier and busier if we let them but having that boundary to say no this is the time where I'm not going to be disturbed no one can reach me I'm going to sit and reflect or be creative or you know just whatever it is that you want to do so that you can have that time to like grow those ideas, I think is really important. So yeah, those are my top ones. Having yeah. boundaries, saying no, um, and just understanding what brings you joy. Because yeah, it's in, only in my more recent years that I've realized what I really like versus what other people like that I feel like I should be doing. Yeah. And by saying no, just <laughs> you're saying yes, to something else yes and hearing your voice by not scrolling on social media first thing and having space for your voice to be present because right. then you're included in your own conversations rather than just hearing other people's voices and messages so beautiful Emma oh well said oh thanks I agree you summed it up because I was rambling you and you summed it up nicely. <laughs> no those were great tips <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. We, we love a ramble. This is how we yes. come to things. This is how we start to understand. Exactly. exactly. Good ramble is good because then you get it all out and then you realize, oh, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> but that's, you know, letting your voice out does, it builds confidence and it is powerful for us to start practicing our no's and our yeses to self and you know, using our voice in general. So yeah. I'm taking that away today for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Saying yes to yourself really is a sacred practice. Exactly. And it's one, it's one that all women should be encouraged to do and be able to do more. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Saying yes to yourself and no to the things that don't resonate. Let them pass mm -hmm. on. It's okay. It's energizing to say no. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you both for joining me today. That was really fun. Yeah, we always have fun. We do always have fun. Yeah. Yes. And um, yeah, I hope everyone is enjoying their Women's Day, the theme of inclusivity, and that you've taken away something from our chat today um, that is helpful. And like Emma said, we'll have the links so you know where to reach us if you want to learn more. And thank you for your time and attention today. I know it's always hard with everything going on, but, you know, choosing to sit down and, and listen and have that reflection, I think is a very powerful action. So, yes, it's something to be celebrated. Yes. All month. It's Women's Month. Oh, oh yes. All right. For, thank you for reminding me. It's just yeah. a woman's day to celebrate all one month. <laughs> yes. So many opportunities to use your voice and include yourself. Yes. Every day. 
Okay, thank you both. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it there. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks all. all.